Hello and welcome and in today's video I'm going to be showing you the best endgame art creatures so the best creatures just for when you're in the endgame. In at number 10 I have to put the crystal wyvern as they are just such useful creatures all the way through the game and while some people would put the wyverns on the list I find crystal items to be vastly superior considering their taming method is substantially easier than any kind of normal wyvern you'll find some people enjoy the thrill but I'd rather just get an easier tame done and I prefer the elemental abilities. The Broad Crystal Riven is my personal favourite, although the Ember one is very good amongst many people as well. People love that one as well. I've got the Tropical one here because it looks the best from the B-roll come on. It looks the most Crystal Wyvern-y, if that's even a word. They really suit Crystal Isles, but they also really suit my art playing with that passive tame being one which I always enjoy doing and I just love taming these things that elemental abilities are so cool and you get all the abilities that a wyvern would have but just at a much easier cost and then right into the late game I'm using these things especially killing I've got spire speed leveling I can really pump the speed in these things and they travel across the map in just no time at all and you know, they do pack a punch in the damage department. Next up, we've got the Stego, and I never really drop this thing from my side when it comes to my general playing in Arc. I always have one of these things by my side to just use. Generally, I love the Stego for all that it offers because in my opinion, it really offers a lot and it offers a lot for me i love its berry gathering and although yes maybe it can be slow and stamina can be cruel but once you boost those and you get a nice high level one which you definitely have by the end game you're really going to enjoy gathering on this thing and maybe there are some more efficient mounts out there but i still will always use my stego for all this stuff and you know they're immune to micro raptors so you might as well at least they were in this case you know it's it's a useful thing rider protection actually it will come in more handy than you may think and for all you pvp players out there you've got to put this in the best end game art creatures list because for a lot of your soaking you're probably going to be using something like a stego but even for a pve players list I definitely do need to put the Stego here. I think it is very, very well deserving of this spot. Coming up next, we have got the Astrodelphus or the Tropignathus. Both of them suit me very well. Although I'm more of an Astrodelphus kind of guy because I just think they're cooler. Although when I'm going on more of the primitive rampage, then I'll use a Tropignathus because sometimes I just completely eliminate tech from my playing because it's not my favourite thing out there, actually. I'm not really very... Uh, pro tech as it seems I'm quite old-fashioned in my ways of arc but I still really do love these creatures and right into the end game I use them even without any sort of speed leveling you can get insane speed out of a creature like this which most people will be considering most people don't have fly speed leveling on which is again sort of a shame i think because i think uh, speed leveling is good maybe put a cap on it at like the 150 mark or 135 mark but still add a little bit of lenience to their world card because everything at base speed can just be a little bit frustrating for me and that's why i use flyer speed leveling but these things have plenty enough of that and they still can be quite hefty with their attacks and they're not too difficult to tame actually you would think of them to be more expensive to tame than they actually are, but trust me, on Gen 2, you're going to have no issues with the expenses. In at number 7, we have got the Rhino Ganatha, and although I don't use it an awful lot in the endgame, I do think it deserves to be here, as I know a lot of you out there are using this in your end game playing, and I think it sort of does just need to be here, you know? The Rhino Ganatha is one of those creatures which can carry a heck of a lot of creatures around. I know with cryopods, it's not really strictly useful in any sense, but still, it's just crazy that it can do that. And it does a hefty amount of damage too, which, you know, is something which I thoroughly enjoy in a late game creature. You're going to want to be dealing all of that damage. It is simply a necessity at this point, especially for a sort of combat orientated mount it just simply needs to happen and needs to be done there's no way around it really you just you just want a tame that deals tons of damage it's also very fast too and can pretty much suit all of your metal run it needs too and you should have no issues with 
anything like that of the sort. They really are great when it comes to it. And they did rip off the tone method of the creature which is next up on the list. So let's just great get straight to that one. Yes, as I hinted, we have got the Reaper in at the spot next in the number six spot actually and this is just such a great game a great end game tame for me like it's sort of the epitome on av but it's not for every map so that's why it's been pushed back so much send you to tame one get a reaper queen to below a thousand health and then it will appoint at you get loads of xp and boom you got yourself your reaper baby born with a hundred percent effectiveness like that you might want to reap pheromone gland so it doesn't kill you as well you might want to pay attention to that. The Rhino doesn't do that when it's born. You can just simply claim it. And also you need resources rather than XP to get 100% effectiveness. It also impregnates your Dino and not you. It's got a short craving timer window. Which is where you're going to give it those resources. Personally I prefer the Reaper's way of doing it. And actually if you want an easy Reaper tame. Go on to Gen 2. Raj has got a great guide for it. So I would definitely recommend that you check that out. Because I think that is quite a useful resource for you players out there. I do definitely enjoy that method occasionally, but I do like the thrill of going through all the effort on AB as well. It just is so great considering how much damage it deals and the mobility you get. Well, yes, I would prefer the torpor tail of the Reaper Queen. On the Reaper Kings, you simply do not get that. If you haven't noticed already, this is actually a Reaper Queen, not a Reaper King. It was just easier to force tame. In number five, I have decided to put the Shadow Mane as this is one of those creatures where it's just so jam packed full of abilities, it deserves to be here. It sort of might clash with the number three spot for me, but that has been in the game for such a while, I'll let it rest until I actually talk about it and I'll give my reasons. The Shadow Mane is such a small yet neat carnivore requiring no saddle and actually having natural armor which is quite a nice ability for a creature like this to actually have. These things can jump to incredible heights and also have the bleed and hydration buff. Same as the Crystal Wyvern, not with the bleed but they do have the hydration buff. Not really useful on a flyer but I guess it's there. You know, you might as well use it from time to time. Dip your wings in that water and get a little bit of a buff. And as you probably could tell already, the Shadow Mains are actually good swimmers. The only main downside is their Tame Method is absolutely awful. And I despise it with all of my emotions. But I won't get into that because um, that uh, demotes these creatures. And in the late game, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Yeah, it'll take some time, but it'll definitely be doable and it's well worth it. Continuing on though, we have got the Desmodus. And this is one of those creatures where I really love them for taming the Bloodstalker. It's not making the list as I don't think many other people would be using the Bloodstalker late game. But it gets an honorable mention here because I do definitely use it in my late game playing which is pretty much all the playing I'm doing at the moment because I haven't really started anything new in uh, quite a while so um, yeah good for me I guess but I, I feel like it simply sort of doesn't deserve to be on this as a way I really love it as underwater traveling mount and for all of that but this creature does help me to get it and I feel like it, it, it represents it still quite well. Having the glide ability and being able to grapple onto walls, vertical surfaces and ceilings this thing really does work in the mobility aspect. And it can make Sangre Elixir, which is a cheat for all of my taming needs, and it's why it really does need to be here. I love doing tames with this creature because they just go by so much quicker, and the blood bike farms, meaning it's great for taming the Bloodstalker as well, and more Desmoduses because they do share the exact same taming method if you didn't know that already. They can pick players off mounts too in PvP scenarios, and even go invisible in the night time. At number three, we have got the Rex, and this is sort of where. You might have a little bit of debate, but I feel like for the end game, for loads of those bosses, the Rex is simply one of those options along with the UT. I'm putting that as an honorable mention here, so don't say I didn't put the UT in the list because it is going in the spot with the Rex as well because I feel like they do go very well together. But they've been in the game for so long and they've probably, especially if you've played for a while, carried you through a lot of the fights that you would have been doing. So I think they really do deserve to be on the list it would simply be a disservice to the rex because it has served us for so long and we've had so many good times with this creature at least i have and i've done a lot with this creature which i simply couldn't have done without it and it deserves to be a great end game arc creature and one of the best which is why i'm putting it in at number three spots as arc would simply not be the same without the rex no matter how much you use it 
the game that still sort of resides on this creature in a way. A dinosaur game without the T-Rex is no longer a really cool dinosaur game and that's sort of how they all work to an extent but it really does have a very useful role and considering they're so easy to tame on ASA you might as well just go and get one of these things and you shouldn't have too much issue whatsoever. In number two we've got the Mailwing. This is the epitome of travel for me. Nothing really can beat it and I used it right the way through the game although it said it was only unlocked at level 18. You know it's sort of insane in a way to be honest when you look at that. Like genuinely crazy but I love this creature for all the attributes that it actually does show. It's a very fast and effective travel mount being like the fastest in the game really you can't beat the maywing and that's with no speed levels at all i simply don't need to level speed on this thing even though i still do because you know you might as well especially if you've got speed leveling so i still ramp up to maybe a good 150 percent this has got no added extra speed on it just to let you know this is actually the default speed of the thing and it's crazy how fast these things go for you breeders out there as well, sounds a little bit sus in a sense of context. You ever thought of that actually when like you, you, you're talking about a game and then just someone hears you out of context talking about the game? Some of the things you're saying, man, it's a little bit crazy. But yeah, for breeders out there, they act as the portal feeding trough. With the use of the Gigantoraptor as well, they can, they can be quite an effective duo. You can carry four babies in its saddle too, even steal enemy baby creatures. They're pretty effective swimmers too, they can skate along the top as well and they gather berries too. And in number one is the Deinonychus. This really just carries my art playing and I'm sorry if you watch a lot of my videos you're gonna see this thing appearing in the number one spot quite a lot and it's staying at the number one spot in this list as well. They are just so great for boss fights I really can't not use these things. They also take no full damage too. I know it's such a minor thing but it really does add a lot of fluidity into my playing when a creature doesn't take full damage. And as you can see, you can grapple onto big creatures and just absolutely rip them to shreds. You've got the bleed ability on top of that as well. Not the bleed ability, the pack ability on top of the bleed ability, which just provides for insane damage. You can decimate bosses in less than a minute. All of the island ones, at least. Maybe not the dragon, considering it flies around, but still, you'd probably be using theories for that if you want to be more on the cautious side, but you can easily do it with dines and i don't really use those for it i use dines the only boss fight i don't actually use these things for is the moda because come on you know they're not great at swimming and that is their only real downside that's sort of where the shadow main excels more as a boss creature but for the moda i'll use probably moses or something like that just some general arc underwater creatures i might use megalodons as well depends how i'm feeling on the day they also are really effective climbing mounts the dynamicus like they are insane for doing all of that parkour around the map they sort of are like the rock drake in that sense although they can't go upside down and on top of this too their tail method is relatively easy you might as well just get one trust me you are going to absolutely love these things but anyway that is the end of today's video i really hope that you all did enjoy as i definitely did enjoy making this one as always comment down below what is the best end game arc tame to you and if you didn't agree with this then make sure to put your 10 in the comments below and i'll see you all later